Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through the scapular assistance test. And the purpose of this test is to see whether or not um, scapular dysfunction is affecting our patient's movement at the shoulder. So, just one thing to mention before we actually show you the test is that we're only going to be performing the test on our patient's right arm. We're not going to be repeating the test on the left side, and that's because we don't want to slow your video down. But of course, in practice, you always want to repeat this test on both sides. So, what are we going to do? I'm just going to ask our patient to turn the other way so I can show you were all at home handling. So, the first thing we're going to do is ask our patient to flex their arm without our input. So if I can ask you to actively flex your arm up towards there and you can come back down. Now if our patient has suggested that that movement is painful, we can then use the scapular assistance test to see if changing something at the scapula improves the movement. So therefore, now that we've done that and got a base measure and our patient has said, yeah, that's quite painful around the uh, tip of my shoulder, we're going to have one hand supporting the inferior angle of the scapula with the webbing of between our thumb and first finger is going to go in that gap at the inferior angle. And our other hand is going to come so that the heel of the hand is supporting against the patient's clavicle. I'm just going to show you, I hope you can see at home my positioning here. So we've got one hand on the inferior angle and the other hand with the heel of the hand on the scapula. That's the handling. So now we're going to ask our patient to repeat that flexion movement. And as they do so, we're going to facilitate the scapula into increased upward rotation, which is what would normally happen when our patient would flex their arm naturally. If I can just ask the, uh, our model to turn this way, and then we can demonstrate that one more time. Up you come. And then we're just facilitating the scapula into upward rotation, as we said, to see if it improves the movement. So, what would be a positive result? Well, if our patient said the first time with no assistant, how oh, that feels sore, and then the second time when we've got our hands on says, oh, that feels better, then that would indicate to us that something around the scapula needs to change in order to improve our patient's movement. So why would that be? Well, it could be that the use of our hands on our patient's uh, skin or around the scapula has improved feedback to the brain and therefore there's better proprioception which improves the movement. It could be that by having our hands in those positions and facilitating the movement, scapula um, controlled muscles that influence upward rotation have activated a little bit more and that's improved the movement. We can't tell exactly from this test what needs to change in order to um, improve our patient's movement, but nonetheless we have noted from this test that directing our treatment towards the scapula might well be a good place to start in order to improve their condition. So what do we find in practice? Well, actually, I really like this test. Um, it often does direct me towards scapular work. Um, and therefore we can use it to improve our patient's movement. Now the chief muscles that are involved in that upward rotation um, include the upper fibres of trapezius. There is some activity from lower fibres of trapezius as well, but serratus anterior is another really important muscle. So generally when I have this with my patient, I might give them some scapular proprioceptive work, um, I might give them some strengthening of those muscles, and we can see if it improves their condition.